Welcome to part two of the assembly of the HMS Victory's launch. This launch was the largest of the rowboats on the HMS Victory. It was used to carry personnel ashore and supplies back to the ship. It had a room for 16 rowers and we used to carry to pull the ship around in light airs and mostly used for anchorage in that it could carry a large anchor out for moorage. Part one was dealt mostly with the assembly of the hull. There was a lot of planking, a double hull uh, rowboat, and painted it and got it prepared. Now part two here is uh, dealing with the deck and the upper part of the rowboat. There's quite a bit of detail in this, in this boat. You can see that uh, there is room for 16 oars and uh, lots of detail on the upper part. So what I want to do is uh, break each of these little, mo each of these little areas of assembly into modules dealing with the, uh, for example, there is a railing that goes up above here and it needs to be bent and I bent it like I did before using hot water and steam but this is a, a thicker piece of wood and it didn't quite bend so good. So I bent it to give it a try but I haven't glued it on. It'll need to be cut and make room for the oars. But as you can see, I got a steam pot up here and I'm going to try working on a steamer. So when I figure out how to steam the wood and bend it, I'll bend the next piece over here and maybe re-bend this and kind of get that set up. So I've kind of played with this a little bit. That's good for this module. There's some decking below that comes first and so it involves some grating on here, building some grating. I built some grating for this part here, but it turns out there's got some planks that go across there for a hatchway. So I didn't quite do that right. And then there's some trim along the edge here, and I put the trim on, and then come to find out that when it comes into here, the ribs from the boat come down and meet with a little ledge right here. And so I gotta sand this off and kind of carve it up a little bit and make it more uniform for these ribs. So I'll be breaking down each one of the sections of this, the, the benches and the, the sail and the mast, and play with them a little bit or do a partial assembly. And once I figure out how this, all this integrates together, then I will go through and systematically assemble the whole boat. So the first part of this video will be dealing with each section and how it works out. And uh, then uh, maybe I'll go a little faster and just assemble the boat and show you the final product. So let's get started. So I'm currently working installing the lower deck and the grating. And I've installed these bulkheads as per instructions and covered these with some strips of wood so they look nice and this one too and laid a little two by two along the end and you install them like that and then you take this foredeck and you cover it with some strips of wood as well and that goes here and then you get your lower grating which is a little too long so I shortened it a little bit and then the final grating at the rear here the final decking at the rear here is here and this is what I'm working on at the moment Kind of prototyping what needs to be done and I've installed one set of grading and I'm getting ready to work on the other one so they're each these are each of the individual pieces and I'm currently working on this stern one back here so the instructions show that the, the ribs come along and they mate with this little gap right here and they show the wood as being curved and I took that to mean that I lay these straight pieces in here and then maybe uh, with an X-Acto blade cut this out and cut this out so I get a nice edge and that's what I'm going to do. And it's the same down here. I'll trim this along and then the ribs come down and meet here. However, in this portion over here, the instructions show the same thing. You can lay this strip along here like this. And you lay the, you cut the strip and you lay them along here. But it shows a curved piece from this long piece here to this one. And this wood just doesn't want to bend in the flat way. I've not figured out how to do that. And so I suppose I could cut it straight and then paste it together or glue it together and put two pieces and make a join right here. But that's not what it shows. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is take one of these larger pieces of wood, which I purchased, and is of a similar nature, and actually I use this for spiling the planks, to also cut a curved piece that would fit there, so it would be a one piece from here to here. Other than that, I guess I could cut them straight and, and join them, and maybe that's what they had in mind. 
but you can see the pictures they look pretty smooth so I think I'm going to stay with the, the, the wood I've laid down here and I'm going to trim it up a little bit so it kind of has that curved effect maybe cut this off and make it a little bit wider here and I've installed one grating and I'm working on the next grating and that's what I'll show you and I'm going to stay with this now as far as actually building this grating the instructions are pretty clear you take these long pieces and you cut them to the length of this gap here and that's why it was important to lay down this little strips of wood just trim because you really needed to know how long these were and that's what I did and I took a pencil and I marked them then I took them offline and with a saw sawed them straight and you get all these little pieces of all the right length that fit in there like that then they give you these little slotted ones and uh, you kind of place the piece of wood in there the long way it, and it jams right in there something like that and you lay this one in here you lay the next one in over here and then you sort of put a dab of glue on there and you got your outline and that's what I've done just place them in there and you're supposed to use two per instructions and glue them in and then I will take the rest of them and uh, fill them in just like that and then they don't quite fill the uh, oops wrong way they don't quite fill the gap so it takes a little bit of a trick to uh, grab some of these other pieces that are shorter and, and fill them in but that's what you do and it's uh, not too hard but the trick would be to have this pieces of wood laid and so then you look forward and you see you got the ribs and so I'll uh, finish this up here and then I'll trim these pieces of wood and I'm thinking the aft section is good to go oh no then I have to do something here we'll show you what that is continuing on with the stern section I saw that I had to install this little piece right here to uh, set the dimensions for this outline so I just lightly tacked it on I think I got to take it off again and manipulate it or smooth it or something but once I got that in there I then cut some pieces of wood from uh, mahogany like they said and laid them in here make sure they're the right one and got them all lined up laid them all in and then I took this piece from underneath turned them over and glued it on so you can see there it is this wood glue is drying and uh, some of the pieces grip okay some of them are a little bit more uh, lightly tacked I'll have to see what I'll do about that and then let it dry it's sort of dry and now it seems to fit in there just fine a little bit tight maybe so I still got to sand it down a little bit and then I'll do the same I'll lay all these pieces out and then flip it over and tack that on and away we go next I've chosen to install the ribs you measure each rib's expected distance. You cut a piece longer than you think you need. You soak it in warm water and you bend the, por the bottom portion of it and then glue it in place. Now with the aft section flooring complete, I will continue on to work on the center section and put the grating in. I was able to cut long pieces in a curved shape on both outside. So I finished with the grating and I spent a little time on making these ribs and kind of got the hang of that so I'm comfortable with it so now I'm going back to the instructions and figure one says uh, glue this uh, platform in and then start working on this barrel for which we'll then put some rope in and tie it to an anchor so that'll be my next little chore take these very small pieces three millimeters by one and build these little slats put them around put some rope around it and that's what I'll do next Building this anchor basket consisted of uh, cutting these little small uh, 
slats, putting in a circle and uh, tying them together with a line. I did that. And this anchor rope is to be laid on top here and look like the bucket is or the basket is full of rope. And that was a little trickier than I thought. Uh, the line was a little stiff, so I saw online there's some really good support videos on how to do this kind of thing. This is called a Flemish um, configuration of some kind. And so I dipped it in a dilute solution of Elmer's glue and water, I don't know, three to one, I kind of smushed them together. And I uh, soaked it and it was wet, a little bit more pliable, and I had to lay it in a, in a circular fashion like this and uh, very carefully put it on a wax paper so it comes off and it kept coming undoing and I got all that done. Kind of made it about the size of the basket. I might have to do a few more when I put it in. And then when I got it all done, I kind of held it down and uh, touched it up with this uh, Elmer's glue. I tried it beforehand to make sure it didn't change the color of the line. And it looked like it held pretty good. And I think when it dries, it just is stiff enough that it doesn't... Uh, I guess I can just lay this on there like that. And... There it is. I think I'll lay it up under there. Then I'll have to figure out how to tie the anchor on there, paint the anchor black, and mount those on the bow. So before I mount anything in the bow, I thought I would finish all the ribs first, since I'd have better access to putting my fingers there and mounting all of that. And then I got to thinking about it, and before I even glue things to the foredeck, I should probably take a look at all the work that needs to be done because the instructions were don't really declare what the sequence of events is. It has a series of numbers, but clearly some of the things listed shouldn't be done until later in the process, where some of the things later in the process should be done first. So I finished the bow basket and the mast holders and the little ring bolt and the axe, and I'm going to set them aside. And by looking at things before I make the sail bag, I should probably make the sails first. And before I do anything else, I think I'm going to start looking at what it takes to put the seats in. I'm thinking the placement of the seats will inform me as to where I place the sail bag and the food locker and these uh, ropes for the anchor and the water barrel and the stern tiller and so forth. All of this has to play together and I'll have to work out where to place these and then how they go in relationship to everything else. So I finished all the parts to the bow section. You can see here there's a whole range of things and I'm thinking these are they. I'll uh, put them in the boat so we can see how they look over there. But uh, I'm not going to glue them in. I think I need to put urethane on all the wood first. Maybe urethane this up. And these little um, doohickeys here that go alongside the wood, I'll show you in a minute, are very difficult to make. I cut a whole bunch of them here. But every time I go to cut them in half or uh, put this little curvature in here, which acts on the ends of the seat, they break. And so that was very tough. And I got a whole stack of them for all the seats ready to go. So let's put them in the boat and I'll show you what I've done so far. So there it is, sort of installed. Like I say, you have to kind of understand the sequence. You can't really find a place where to put these little things until this is installed and when these are installed, as the seats installed, this is how you know how to shape these little items, how it all fits in. And then I got to urethane various items before I put them in. But uh, that's how it'll look. I've uh, tapered the mass so it fits in the hole, but there's still a lot of mass work to be done. And as you can see here, I finished all this bow area here. Next is the sail sack, but I'm a little reluctant to do this to cut the sail cloth because there's only one piece. And it says to put the trimmings into this sack, so I think I'll finish the mast first, put the sail on the mast, and furl it up so we can lay it down on these little holders here so it's laying crosswise. But before I do that one, I'll probably do it last. I'll put this bench on, then I'll put this box, then this bench, then this bench. That should all go straight forward. I'll work on cutting these, and maybe by the time I get this far, I'll feel confident enough to urethane that all up and permanently glue them in. Then, the anchor raising um, equipment here with barrels of rope, and i got to carve this up and put it in, put these tubes in here, you'll see them when they come, will be a fair amount of work. Then again, it seems fairly easy to put this seat in and this water barrel. And lastly, we turn to the stern section here, which has a whole bunch of stuff. The anchor winch, there's a tiller in here, some barrels, some more line. 
and then we have to put the rudder in and that might be the completion so here we go so I've been working on the parts of the upper deck I've created these so far but I'm losing track of their exact installation and the relationship to one another things got to align to some extent so before I go any further I'm going to permanently install these and then proceed on with the remaining parts we're getting there I gotta probably do a little urethane onto the big boat first before I install these so here's my status. So I've installed these seats along here and all the various devices. I haven't done the sail bag yet. I will wait till I do the main sail. But I've got this uh, winch, anchor winch part installed and I'm getting ready to come back and I have this anchor winch part to install as well. So in order to install this anchor winch here, I need to install this piece of wood up here on top so I can set part of the winch on top. But in order to put this on, I need to have this piece of wood along the gunnel, which will be used for the oar locks. And this is where I am now. I think I need to bend this top wood and get it cut and set before I put this on, because you file this to make it smooth. And I have to do this before I put the anchor winch on. Sequence has always been a little bit tough for me to understand, but I think that's what I'm doing. So my next step is to bend this gunnel wood and get it ready and then start to rear preparation in preparation for doing this business here which then I'll work from the stern forward and that'll place this bench and this bench and I might have most of my work done. I used this setup here to steam the wood and after 45 minutes the wood came out and it was still pretty stiff I didn't quite understand so I talked to my friend Bob who knows about steaming wood and he said this will probably work all right for the small pieces I'm using but because the end was open he said the steam is bypassing the wood and not really getting a chance to soak it in. It would be better if I capped it. I didn't really have a cap for this inch and a quarter inside diameter plastic tube. I didn't know what else to do. So I clamped it shut and I uh, put some aluminum tape around it and I think it slows the heat down and I'm going to give this a try and instead of 45 minutes I'm going to go for an hour and 45 or something along the lines of two hours and uh, see how this works. So I think I'm on to getting soft wood. So I can't say the steamed wood was supple and just bent very easy, but it was soft enough to sort of force into place. And I used all these clamps and I'll take them off here shortly and I think they will, they will show that the wood has, has bent to the form I want. And now that I got these pieces, I think I can just glue them into place. It doesn't take much pressure. And I'll put them in, either temporary or glue them in. And then I'll start to trim this down so it's flush. And I also put a small bend on this that goes across the top. And by gluing these in like this, placing that on like that, filing it all down, I'll be able then to install my anchor winch and continue on the way. I've got a little problem of a gap here. I didn't quite see. This seems to go down a little bit more than this one did, but I can fix that. I really should have gone out and bought a wider piece of this color wood and spiled a piece or cut one uniform piece all along the way there. But I followed the instructions and cut them into little chunks like it sh showed. And now I've got these joints that I'm not too happy with. And at the same time, I probably should have sanded the underlying part here, the gunnel part, because now I have these cracks. I don't know how well you can see them, but they're there. And there's some cracks on top here. And so uh, some kind fellow made comments on this boat earlier on and said what you need to do is lay some glue and some sawdust on there. And I did that and I was very impressed. It worked quite well. So I thought I'd pass it on and show you if in fact you have uh, gaps in, your, in the siding here or anywhere else you have. This seems to work good for me. So here's what I've done.
shavings from my garage. I'll let it dry and sand it. All right, that's pretty dry now after a couple hours. Like I say, I should have uh, sanded the, the bottom part flat more carefully. It wouldn't have been that gap to start with. But it's a recovery aspect. It looks better than it did before. So I'll uh, continue to do the rest of the boat that way. And next time, I'll cut a piece of wood the right size. All right, here I am so far. I've installed both handrails all the way down and uh, have slots in there for the oars to fit in, like oar locks. And I brought it all the way back and made a nice joint here with this top piece. And uh, it's pretty good for the time being. I like it for now. And I put these seats in, so now I'm ready to install this stern device. I built it and it fits in there like this. I'm not quite sure what it is though. I've looked online and uh, it seems like the only thing I can find is this acts like a stern davit. In other words, the anchor holds off the back of this and it keeps the space between the stern and here for the buoy or the anchor itself and protects the stern of the boat. The only other device I can see is uh, it could be a, um, a leverage device where this stays on and this track slides and as you lift it, it helps lift the anchor. But I don't think that's what it is. And so the real question is, is how do I install it? I think I take this here and glue it to the back and uh, instead of letting this slide I'm going to glue it down. You take two pins and you install them and you flatten the heads and they come out. And on the real boat I imagine you disassemble that, you pull these pins out and you pull the device out minus these two here. And then you have a tiller here that attacks to the rudder which is probably be my next chore. And then you can steer that but when you're doing business with an anchor you put this back in and this acts as your davit. So that's where I am so far and uh, now I'm on to the next devices. The rudder and maybe build the oars or start thinking about the mast. <clears throat> so I'd like to talk about making these oars. They gave us uh, this 2x10 to make the paddles and there's uh, plenty of, uh, of this wood to make extra paddles so I can make a mistake and have one left over. And they gave us plenty of this 8x8 to make the paddle stop, or the oar stops, so they don't go overboard. And plenty of the handle material, 4 millimeter rod, that worked just fine. But they gave me just the right amount of this 6 millimeter, which is the uh, shaft of the oar, and there's none left over. And so any kind of mistake, and I'm going to have to go out and buy some extra, and it might be of a different color and a different kind of wood texture and everything, so I'm being real careful not to make mistakes on that. And uh, what you do is you take this, um, take this six by ten, and you look at the measurements. And I've done a lot of calculations, and it's to be about uh, what is it here? Fifty-eight. I can't see. To be fifty-seven millimeters long, and uh, you bevel the sides, and that's all quite clear. And I made a couple of those. I'm making these two oars at a time. I made one just to get the process down. Now I'm making two at a time. So you make the paddles. And then you, you cut the rods and you cut the ends. And I've done a bunch of this like I've, I've shown you before, or I, as you can see, I've done before. And I've made some of these uh, rods. They're all of a variety of, they're of a length that is specified in the paper. And I'm going to show you how I made it without uh, any fancy tools. Doing two at a time, and you, okay, what do you call these paddle arms? Off. Two millimeters wide, and per my drawing, 20 millimeters long. And I hand sketch in all the way down, and that's the slot I cut. Since I don't have the big workshop, nor all the expensive tools like table saws and uh, giant saws. I do have a Dremel jigsaw and a Dremel grinder. Those are pretty much my power tools in a drill. But I do have Thomas the Tank Engine track here. 
and I've set this fence up over here to where when I lay this piece of wood in the track and it sticks out with those two lines I just made up higher, it cuts one part of the drill, uh, one part of this ore arm, and then I put a little shim in here and I cut the other one. And this is how I do it. Your plugs, eye guard, face mask. So that gets the basic cut in there, but it's not quite wide enough to put the paddles in. So then it requires a lot of hand work. Next. And a hand sketch in. Well, that's pretty much the interesting part of building these ores. Uh, the rest of it's just straightforward stuff. Drill holes in the end, build the little handles, sand them down so they fit in the hole, sand the other part of the ore down, the ore um, rod, so it fits in there, and you end up getting these ores. Um, I can't say that this is the right way to do it. It's just the way I did it. I thought that I'd share that with you. Makes me think I need to go out and buy some more tools if I'm going to build more boats. I don't know if I need a, a bigger jigsaw or a table saw. I'll have to think about it. I'll, I'll buy one tool and figure out which is the best one to go forward. But with one I have, I did, I'm working on my craftsmanship, my hand sanding and cutting. And it's getting better. Practice makes perfect. So I've completed all the components of the aft part of the rowboat and now I will install them. So I think everything's installed on the interior here. Here it is in the configuration of a sailboat with a stern tiller, basically the captain's gig. Later on I'll uh, furl the sail, stow it away, put the stern davit in, and stow it away in the configuration of a boat that can handle the big ship's anchor. Here's another configuration of the captain's gig. And here's the final configuration with the stern davit attached, the tiller stowed, the mast stowed, and the men are rowing a big heavy anchor out to drop.
Here's what it would look like when they would be hauling out the main ship's anchor. That's a big one. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sure enjoyed making the boat. And that was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. And I guess that'll be it for this year. I'll make another boat next year. So I'll see you then. Enjoy.